Hello there everyone. Today I want to show you how to make these open frame wire work rings. And this is what the ones I've made look like. So I've got some different shapes here. All with the same technique and the same principle. So I've got a regular diamond or square shape here. It's what I'm going to show you in the video. And then I've got a heart shaped and a star one. And they're all the same technique like I said. To just create these open shapes. So you can really make any shape that you want to and get a really nice ring like this. And obviously you can build them, this you can fill it in or you can do whatever you want with them. But if you want to learn how to make these rings in whatever shape you want to, then stay tuned. So the wire that we'll need to make this ring are two different gauges here. They're both regular round wire and I'm just working with a silver coated copper wire. The first one here is a 0.8mm and this is going to be the base wire, so the structure of the piece. And then the other one here is a 0.4mm and this is going to be the wrapping wire. So let's get a wire ready and let's get started. So then the length of wire that we're going to need is I have one length here of my 0.8mm first of all. I have about 40 centimeters of this. We're not going to need that much because it's just a ring we're making. But I also just want to make sure we have enough to work with. And then also we need a length of a 0.4mm wire to begin with. Now what I have here is about a metre and a half. So we're going to start off doing the ring bend and then we're going to move into doing the shape as well. So we need to use this for wrapping. So then the first thing we need to do is take a 0.8mm wire here, so the length that we have of that. And then we need to start making the shape first that we want the ring to be. Because we're then going to go on from that and make the ring bend. So what we need to do is just find the middle roughly. You can either put the ends together or you can measure it. I'm just going to roughly find the middle doesn't have to be too precise because there is enough wire here to also have a bit left over at the end. It's just so enough to work with. So I have the middle here roughly where I have my pliers and then the shape that I'm going to be doing is just a square or obviously depending what way you have it. The way I'm going to have it is going to be more like a diamond shape but I'm going to put my first angle in by just bending my wire against my pliers and then I want to get a right angle in there and then also make sure you just have your wires are straight so the tails here that you don't have any kinks in that and get them as straight as possible so you put your first angle in there and you can always sharpen it up to get an S straight an angle as possible just like that now obviously if you're making another shape like a round or something else you can always just shape it around something if you have something that's exactly the shape that you want it to be and size as well. But for this I'm just going to be making angles like this so I want each side of my diamond or square to be about one centimetre. So I'm just going to get my ruler out because I haven't, I wasn't able to find something that has exactly the shape and size that I want so I'm just going to be using my pliers. So what I'm going to do is then measure here and I want each side to be about one centimetre. So to do that I'm going to measure from the first angle and then go one centimetre across, put my pliers in just before the one centimetre point. Like that, pick it up and then I have a long tail there, I'm going to get my bend my wire against my pliers there like that again get a nice and sharp angle in there you can work with it a little bit if you need to to get a right angle so something like that now I want to go to the other side and do the same thing so also from the original point where I bent it, so the first angle, put that, if you want to start at zero or whatever, and then go out one centimetre, mm -hmm. making sure to put your pliers right before that centimetre. Just like that. Keep hold of it, and then bend your wire against your pliers to get your right angle in there as well. And you can see I bent a bit too far, but that doesn't matter because we can just put the pliers back in and adjust it till we're completely happy with the shape that we have. And then we have our two tails for this shape that I'm making now crossing over each other there. 
So we just want to make sure that this shape is exactly how we want it before we then make the final bend here to the nozzle going to the ring band. So actually I'm pretty happy with that. It's a nice even square all the way around. Obviously it's going to sit like that so it'll end up being more like a diamond shape. But it doesn't really matter. So like that. And now you can measure again or you can do this one by eye. Because I now need to use these tails to bend them. So we can start going into the ring band. So to do that, basically we have this corner that's equivalent to that one. All I want to do is just go a little bit further down than where the two wires are crossing over. So um, there's going to be about maybe about a millimeter's gap or something between where the other wire crosses over and then where I'm placing my pliers. Because what you all, always got to bear in mind when you work with wire, when you bend it and you're using pliers, it's not going to bend in the exact spot where you have your pliers in. It's going to be about a millimeter or two further away from the pliers. So you just got to take that into account. So I'm going to place my pliers where I feel comfortable and it's about right and then bend this tail outward. Now I'm not going to give this a 90 degree angle. It's going to bend it out like this because we need these tails to come outward from that corner to then start making the ring bend. I'm doing the same with the other side. So place your pliers so the bend on this side is going to be roughly in the same place. And we can always adjust it a bit, so just take your time doing this, because that's the main thing really, to get the shape in place. So we get the shape just how we want it to be, because then we can keep working from there. Just need to bend it a little bit more. So something a bit like this. And then it's not 100% yet, I think. But like I said, we just keep working with it a bit adjust it however we need to. That one's coming straight out. So I need this one. Do it going back a bit further. And then make the bend to come straight out. So something like that. So now I have that either square or diamond shape. And I have the two tails coming from that corner the last one that we reached, coming straight out and going pretty much next to each other like this. So this is now the point where we want to start making the ring band from. Once you're happy with this shape, and like I said, if you're making another kind of shape, just do whatever you want to. If you have something to form your wire around, that definitely makes it easier if you do that. So once we then have the shape in place, then we need to start weaving. So we need to get a 0.4mm wire out that we already cut ready. And then we need to use these tails here to start making the ring band. So what I'm going to do is what weave you want to use is kind of completely up to you really. What I'm going to be using is a diagonal weave. And I'm just going to place this behind first and just use a little tail to hold on to. And then you want to take your 0.4mm wire and first of all wrap it around the bottom one here. So come down in between the two, push it down. And then I'm going to go over, so coming from behind and going over both of them, like that. And then come up in between the two, push that all the way down. Every time you do a wrap, make sure to push it down. And then just go around the bottom one, the top one, sorry, on its own. So there we go, that's the first go around. So we've gone around the bottom one once, around both of them once, and then around the top one once. So again, move back down to the bottom, coming from behind, going around the bottom one on its own, push it all the way down, go around both of them, come up in between the two, and then go around the top one on its own. And there we've done it twice, so two full go arounds there, and we're back to going around the bottom one again. So this is how I'm going to be doing my ring band. Just keep doing this for however long you need your ring band to be. Obviously remembering that this is going to sit on top of the finger, so it's not the whole circumference of your finger. It's just until it would reach the other side of whatever shape that you've made. So keep doing this. So now I have this long weave here that's going to be my ring band. So now what we need to do is 
get a ring mandrel out or you can use something else like a marker if you have something of the right shape and size that you need the size ring to be. And then what I'm going to do is just place the shape that I've made on top of the ring mandrel at the size that I want the ring to be obviously and place it down and then I basically want to shape this whatever shape that you've made if you made the square or diamond like me just press it against the ring mandrel so the shape itself gets a bit of a curve there because that's going to also make sure it sits nicely and comfortably on the finger so press that and then hold it down and then we just need to pull the weave around so that's going to be the ring band all the way around to the other side here so the end of the weave meets the other side of your shape so in this case it's the point because it's the diamond that we made or the square so like that so we now have the rough shape in place we can always go in and adjust the shape a bit more once we've made the ring but this is just to get to the point where we can continue making it now so now what we need to do is then keep working with these two tails but we need to split them up and for that we basically need one tail to go each its own direction its own way around the shape that we made so I'll take my chain nose pliers place them in, I just need to open them out a little bit to get my pliers in get them all the way down to where my weave finishes place them there and then just make a nice bend start with a gentle one to begin with, obviously this is if you have an actual point like I do here if you have a different shape just make it according to so it's going to fit your shape bend them outwards and then you can keep measuring against here so see if the actual shape slots in nicely then I'm just going to have to press this a bit more so it's going to fit nicely together so like that, that's pretty good actually so like I said just keep moving and maneuvering things until you're completely happy until you know before we start making the next step so that's going to sit fine to me. So what we need to do now is continue using this weaving wire and start connecting these two things together so it's going to be one solid piece. Now we can only obviously work with one side at a time here so we just need to work our way up a little bit of the wire here to get up to the point where the two kind of meet up. So I'm just going to Coil it around, wrap it around the single wire a couple of times until I feel I can start incorporating the shape as well. So now instead of having these two as my base wires that I'm going to wrap around, this is still going to be my base wire but then the other base wire is going to be the one from the shape. Let's have a look. I think that's pretty good now. I'm just going to make sure to squeeze them tight. And then what I'm going to do, now the weave that I'm going to do now is one where I wrap around the individual wire once, so the outer one, and then I'll wrap around that twice, sorry, and then wrap around both of them twice together. And I'm going to keep doing that to create that kind of framed look to it. So I'm going to go over the top of both of them and then go down through the shape and pull all the wire through and push it down. And then it's going to, in my case, I have that diamond shape, so it's going to sit right at the tip there. So that was once, we need to do that again. Bring it from underneath, around over the top of them, and then down through the shape. And pull all of it through. And then just make sure to push it as far down as possible. So it's gonna sit right at the tip there. And your shape and your piece can still move because we're just in the process of connecting them together. But just take your time and make sure to keep hold of it so it sits nicely. So that's twice, now we go back to just wrapping around this original tail, so kind of the loose one as you can say, on its own. Make sure you always push your wraps down. You can always just help using some pliers for that as well. And do that twice. So once you've done that twice, go around over the top of both of them again and down through the shape and then do that twice as well. So this is basically going to be the wrap that we're going to be doing to make the frame basically fill in this space, the shape that we made 
and just make sure that you, this wire, the outside wire, follows the shape of the other one, so the one that you've already made into the shape you want it to be. And then just continue doing this wrap. So I've now weaved up this one side of my frame and I've reached that point on this side as well. So what we need to do now is obviously have this wire come back down the other side. And the same way if you do any other shape, you want to follow the outside wire here according to your inner shape that you already made. And I prefer doing that as I go so I don't get ahead of myself too much because then I might regret or the shape might change a little bit. So I do it as I go. But then in this case, you can either just kind of get to this point, finish, we'll get to the weave where it's going to be right in the corner and then bend it. Or you can also use pliers. It also depends how sharp you want your angle to be, really. Because um, the pliers are going to make a sharper bend than if you just push it with your hands. So with your pliers, you would just place it in where you'd want the bend to be, taking into account that you're going to have a little bit of space next to your pliers where the bend is actually going to be. So it's not going to bend right where your pliers are. But otherwise, you can also just push with your fingers and as you can see there, you get a little bit more rounded one. But it's really personal preference as well, but it works just fine. And have it come back up the other side there. And you can see it's going to lie perfectly next to the other one with a little bit of space. So we have that space to add in a weaving wire there as well. Now as we're just getting your weaving wire around that corner, it really depends on your weave itself, how it's ended up. but. What I would suggest is you can always just wrap a couple of times around the outer wire here to get yourself around the corner and just over to the other side and then start wrapping around both of them again as well. So going to the same weave that you did on this side. It's just so you don't bunch up your wire too much or you might run out of space. So there, make sure you squeeze it together. And then I'm in perfect position. I know I've got space to start wrapping around both of them again. And then pick up the exact same weave. You just do this until you've gone almost all the way down to where the other weave starts, so for the ring band, but just where that corner is on your shape if you've got the same shape as me. Just leave a little bit of space before you go all the way down. So I've now reached the point here on this side where my weave is almost all the way up to this, this corner as well. So what I want to do is just kind of tidy this up a little bit because we still have the original tail left when we started wrapping for the ring band there I just want to get rid of that because otherwise it might just get in the way so I have this coming from around the top around the front there and then what I'm going to do is take my flush cutters and then just chop it down so I have about a millimetre left so if you run your finger over you can just feel it and then I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers squeeze down the end and then do a bit of a roll in the direction that the wire is going so basically that end is going to get tucked away in between the two base wires right there in the corner. So it's going to get rid of that so you can't feel it and it's not going to be in the way while we'll continue working with it. So that's finished off now. So what you can choose to do, because whereas you need to do this side as well, you can either just leave this end for now and then start working on this and then finish the two off at the same time if you feel comfortable with that. Or you can finish this side off now, so you'll have a bit less going on. Or you can just go over to this side after. So what I'm going to do, if you just finish this one off now. So I'm going to cut this down. Because we have just a little bit of space from the weaving of bare wire still until the ring band. So what we need to do is this base wire, we need to cut it down. And what I'm going to do is go in a bit at an angle. And I basically want to cut it right where the end of it then, once you've cut it, is going to go up straight up against the ring band. So it's just a bit of judgement. And if anything, rather cut it too long than too short, because you can then always go in and cut off a little bit more and a little bit more. And then just get it into place. And you can see that it's a little bit too long. But that just means I go in and cut off a little bit more. Rather do that than cut off too much to begin with. They're still just a tiny bit too long. So then this is basically finishing off this base wire nice and neatly. But also it's not going to get in the way and catch or scratch. Just a tiny bit more. 
it's better doing little cuts rather than big ones because if you end up then cutting off too much then you obviously can't really do anything about that. Like that, and bend it in and see how it sits. So it's going to sit pretty perfectly. So then what we need to do now is just finish off the wrapping on this side and that's going to then lock that end of wire into place. So just continue with the same wrap to basically fill out the space that we still have left of the bare base wires. So it's also going to be nice and seamless. So you know it's not really going to, by finishing off base wire like this, it's not really going to be obvious where the ends are of your wire. It's going to go around the outer one on its own to continue the same wrap. Now you might just need to use some pliers as well to help you get the wire in place. Or if you struggle with that, you can always then start going to the end of your wire and then poking that through. Because you do have the space for your weaving wire, you just need to get it in there between the two base wires. So that's a way of doing it as well. And then just pull it so you wrap around that outer one on its own. And once more. Basically just continuing the same wrap here. So the same wire weave to make it nice and seamless. And then really it's just a matter of how much space you have here. Now I can see that I am going to have space for another one around, you know, another two wraps here around both of them. And that's going to then nicely finish off that end here. Like that and the last one should be just fine. all the way around and then just check it and there we go and then I can just I don't have any more space to wrap around the outer one now so what I can just do is I have those two last wraps around both of them I can just get my weaving wire basically kind of pull it in and then just wrap around once or twice around the inner frame so the inner base wire just right there in the corner and it will blend in so just like that and then we'll do the same thing finishing off this weaving wire as we did on the other side there from the ring band just use your flush cutters cut it off so you have about a millimeter or so left and then just use your chain nose pliers to tuck that wire in between the base wires there right in that corner and then that's this side finished off. And as you can see, it's pretty nice and seamless. There's no obvious way you can see that that's where you finished off your wire. So now we have to go to the other side and basically just do the same thing. So to that, to do that, all we need to do is start off a new wire. So we take out another length of a 0.4mm wire. Depending on how much you got left from the other side that you cut off, you can possibly use the rest of that if it's long enough. But you just want to attach this Again around the outside one a couple of times on its own because that will be equivalent to the other side and just to get it started as well. And obviously we're just working the other way now with the weave to get it looking the same and fitting nicely. So one more to get up to where we can start wrapping around both. There we go. And then we just go into the same wrap again. So down through the shape to take it around both wires here and continue this. So repeat the same as you did on the other side. It's just obviously on the other side so it's kind of mirrored how you're working. And then you also want to finish off these wires on that other side here in that corner the exact same way. And then once you've done that, then basically the shape and the base of your ring will be done. So this is then the final ring that I've ended up with. And you have this continuous ring band and it just all looks like one piece because of how we've made it here. 
And then obviously this is just a shape that I've done, so it'll sit like this on your finger. But you can really make whatever shape you want to, so I've made a heart shape one. And then a star as well. And they just give really nice effects, regardless what shape you're making. And you get these seamless rings, both with the shape and the ring band. So, that's how you make these with a the technique that I've showed you, whatever shape you want to do. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And thank you very much for watching. Hello there everyone. Today I want to show you how to make this wirework flower ring. And this is what it looks like. So I call it a flower ring because I'm using a flower bead, a flower gemstone. This is quartzite. But otherwise I'm going to teach you how to make the band and how to set the stone into it. So it's a little bit like a prong set type technique, except this 